So we have a heat Attention. of the Wifold Challenge Cup between Sydney yeah. Rowing Club of Australia Get on the ready, left please. of your shot there and the city of Oxford in the red, white and blue to the right. Looks to me like we're fairly well ready, just a few little movements. The hand goes up to tell the umpire we're not quite ready yet. The umpire will see the straight. Attention! Go! And we're away after what was quite a long hold, but in the end it looks like both crews squeezed it out there quite nicely. Always aggressive, the start of a Coxless Fours event, and both of these crews know how hard they've got to go in order to get through to the next round. Coming through the shadows of the trees behind the island, we're looking close up here at the City of Oxford Rowing Club, stroked by Alexander Simmons, and he's taking his crew confidently away from the start, chasing the Sydney Rowing Club. Yeah, Sydney Rowing Club made a pretty good start there, but... Um... Oxford on that near side in the shadow, out here in the sun and out easing their way into the lead, just moving really smoothly at a high rate, but it's really loose around that finish, isn't it? And then they let the boat just glide up under them in that Sydney boat. And if the uh, technical style looks familiar to you, Greg, I'm told that their coach was uh, a protege of Wade Hall Crags, and he coached at, uh, for many years at Durham with Wade yeah, and no. France. Wade Hallcrags, a very good uh, single sculler in his own right. We have a look here in this Oxford City boat and um, keeping the rate high, coming uh, out towards about the quarter mile. Some here, uh, somewhere around here, we need to settle in some kind of a pace that will be sustainable through the middle. But um, they're probably feeling the pressure that uh, they want to keep an overlap with that crew from Sydney. Let's quick run down the uh, City of Oxford crew in the bows. We've got Simon Kersel Jensen, he's 24. And uh, he's an experienced athlete. He's been rowing for over 10 years and has done Henley every year since 2013. Matt Swiss is our two-man younger at 21 years. And uh, he started rowing in Dart Totnes, fabulous club down in the southwest of England. And like many, was inspired by the 2012 Olympics. That might have been you, Greg, yeah, giving, giving someone their start in the sport. At three, James Watson, he's 37, he's the experience in the crew, and our stroke man, as I've already said, Alexander Simmons. And uh, inspired, I hope they were, um, as this Sydney crew is looking. Um, they are experienced uh, campaigners. Um, Alex Nickel in the three seat of this Wifold 4 came here last year and made it through to the semi-final, now hoping to go, I suppose, two places better. Um, and end up with one of those little red boxes with a gold medal in it at the end of this regatta. Um, and there's still pretty not much no let up um, from the Sydney crew on the right of the picture here. Steering the boats well, um, obviously coxless boats, so the old rudder on the foot, but um, it looks like they're doing a pretty decent job of staying well on their stations, letting the umpire um, enjoy the, uh, the view out in front of them as we had a look at that stern of the Oxford boat, the rudders underneath there. Um, Having a little look over the shoulder there, and uh, Simon Kurzweil Jensen will see it's a reasonably long view that he has to take to see their Sydney crew at this stage. Yeah, you can see the disappearing puddles of the uh, adjacent crew when you're in the bow seat, and of course they dissipate. So if the puddles are very faint, sadly it's a sign that the other crew is well in front. Yeah, and unfortunately they're in a position where you then start to just get kind of dragged in, the sort of bow wave from the Sydney boat will just be starting to affect the Oxford boat, which kind of makes it hard to, to keep on your station because you just get dragged in. You'll see just a bit of uncomfortable water under the puddles in that following boat. So nothing to worry about for the Sydney crew out here in front. Sydney, two men called Oscar, two men called Alex, and I'm reliably informed by the lovely Lizzie Chapman that two of them have dads who were Olympians themselves, one for Sweden and uh, one for Australia. So, a bit of breeding. Yeah, undoubtedly good genes, but yeah, as you say, Oscar Olsen uh, and Oscar Carr Middleton, both actually British, uh, one at Pangbourne, um, one at Eton, um, but now at the universe, uh, uh, living in Sydney, um, where they're uh, obviously coming back home to race here on the Thames on this Henley stretch and um, stretching their lead um, still not much uh, not much let up in terms of uh, just the smoothness 
Although perhaps the intensity has just come off the Sydney crew. Yesterday, the Sydney crew came up against the Cambridge 99s rowing club. They beat them quite comfortably by four and three quarter lengths, and they actually clocked the second fastest time of the day yesterday in that race, which is a good pedigree, I think, for the future, Greg, because if you've got such a long winning margin and you're up there on the times, I think it bodes well. Definitely bodes well. Um, just taking a rate on the Sydney crew. They're down to about 30 now. Um, so when we think about the times in these early rounds, I guess we've got to bear in mind whether they had a close race the day before, whether they got pushed and had to really go the distance. Um, the Sydney crew really smooth, but also really in control. So they can drop the rate. Um, just seeing the umpire fla umpire's flags going up there just to ease them back onto the station as they're coming into the enclosure. And uh, a good quick response um, from... Alex Potter it is in the stroke seat who has the rudder and has responded well got back onto the station and uh, nothing to worry about there as we see a lovely shot from above just seeing their stroke lengths nicely mapped out and that shot also gives you a good clue as to the impact that Greg was mentioned earlier about the wake from the leading boat affecting the crew behind them now just rock backwards and forwards in your chair as you watch this wonderful synchronous movement of these four men. You can almost feel you're in the boat with them. Well, I think we talk about rhythm in rowing, and I guess that's what we're looking at here, just a really smooth rhythm where the hands just come around that back turn in front of the bodies, and then there's just a relaxation of the body. The, the body can relax and the feet just come towards you. You do very little to slow it down. You pick up the next stroke and you push it away. And that's that rhythm that you're talking about there, like you're in a rocking chair. And I fear if I was in the City of Oxford crew, I'd be steering very close to the booms at this point because that disruption from the puddles of the Sydney crew, you can clearly see the puddles coming underneath the bow of the uh, City of Oxford boat, both the puddles from the wash from their blades but also the stern. That's going to make it rocky for them. Yeah, they're doing the best, up to 37 strokes a minute in the City of Oxford crew. They're racing here at Henley. It's a sunny Thursday afternoon. Uh, they're closing that gap, coming up towards the line. But as they come here, we can see the crew from Sydney Rowing Club in Australia looking in control as they cross the finish line. And they will relax. Look forward to tomorrow as the crew from City of Oxford Rowing Club now cross the line. And we should see confirmation that was a win in the Whitehall Challenge Cup for Sydney Rowing Club over the City of Oxford.